Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus yet again. I am Trace, and this is episode three of three in our series on algorithms. If you haven't watched the first two episodes, make sure you go back and do that. Make sure also that you subscribe so you get all of the Seeker Pluses. There's gonna be more coming, don't you worry. You can also find audio versions of this episode over on wherever you get your podcasts. Easy to find, just type in Seeker Plus. Okay, today we're gonna talk about algorithms again, but today it's about how bad they are, how evil they are, and how terrible they are, how they make our lives worse, and how much a day in the life could be made worse by algorithms. So, let's kick into it. Algorithms are strings of mathematical statements that weigh different things and sort through information, which sounds familiar, because that's how we started the last section. But this time, it's horrifying. Right? This episode is about how algorithms can make humanity so, so much worse. The reason being, even though we think of algorithms as this beautiful computational thing that's sorting through all this information in the background and it's the cornerstone of all these different businesses, algorithms at the end of the day are built by people. Algorithms might seem like faultless machines. If it does something wrong, it's just a bug. We can fix that bug. But again, algorithms are created by people. So let me give you an example of how algorithms can make life worse. Is a whisk, like in the kitchen, or a carpet, like on the floor, a gendered item? Is one of those things feminine or masculine? In a study using image recognition algorithms, women were associated with the kitchen. The algorithm saw a whisk and thought, kitchen, that must be a woman thing. They didn't specifically program the algorithm to say that or to do that. It was the subconscious bias of the humans that built the algorithm that put that in there. The computer only amplified it because it was using a set of rules to solve a problem. Computers don't think, oh, well, I probably shouldn't have that thought. They just do what they're told. So in fact, when the algorithm started to see these gendered terms, its bias was increased by the rules it was given. Bias, by the way, in programming is over or under sampling of data in comparison to reality. It's not about perception of reality. A researcher at Oxford in Data Ethics and Algorithms wrote, quote, the world is biased. The historical data is biased. Hence, it is not surprising that we receive biased results. Now, the world isn't getting worse because of algorithms necessarily. It's just getting different. And it's not just in sexism. For example, the MIT Tech Review wrote about a Harvard professor that was doing some research. If you search for black sounding names on Google, the Google ads, those things along the side of the search, are about arrests, background checks, and criminal activity. Why? Because someone programmed the algorithm to do that, potentially? It could also be because it's reading society and it's holding a mirror to different things that we value and different things that we do. Do humans treat people with black sounding names differently, better, worse? Not really, although resumes with African-American or Asian sounding names are less likely to get interviews. They're less likely to get hired. So if we built an algorithm to do a human's job in those areas, the algorithm might also bias. It might also not hire people with certain names because of something that we put into the algorithm. Doesn't this mean that we can fix the algorithm? You know, it's just a bug. This is a faultless computer, but it's gonna hurt people first, right? It's gonna have to be spotted. We're gonna have to find the problem and then we're gonna have to fix it. Now I'm not saying algorithms are evil. However, let's say you wake up and you open Instagram. And the first thing you see is a photo of your recent ex, right? Not a great way to start the day. You just broke up. You don't feel so good about it. But the algorithm on Instagram knows that you have a relationship with that person, or had for now. You shared a lot with that person. You liked their photos. They liked your photos. And it figured you'd like to see their photo in your feed. They may not necessarily know that you broke up, maybe, They may think that you're gonna comment or like or interact with that photo anyway. It's just doing its job. It's an algorithm. But damn, that's cold, right? (laughs) It knew and did it anyway. So now you're up and you open your news app and the news is telling you about the stock market. By the way, in the stock market, algorithms are doing some of the trading now. 
It eliminates a human waiting for a certain price to buy or sell. It also eliminates another human waiting on the other side of that same transaction. The computer just watches the stock price and triggers the sell or buy ticket. Easy, simple algorithm. The thing is, what if there are multiple algorithms running at the same time? What if something happens out in the world and the computers are unaware, right? There are factors that are involved that algorithms might not take into account. For example, in May of 2010, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 1,000 points in just minutes. That's, quote, one trillion of value that was erased from the U.S. stock market in minutes. Quote, some orders were executed at irrational prices, as low as a penny or as high as $100,000 before the share prices returned to their pre-crash levels. How they did this? Algorithms. Computers triggered again and again, freaking out. And they connected to each other and said, oh my God, you're freaking out, I'm freaking out. We need to sell these things, we need to buy these things. And they did it so fast that no human could have stopped it. It happened in mere minutes. Nobody even knew what had happened and it was already over. Eventually, of course, the levels did return to normal, thank goodness, but ouch. Those algorithms could really have messed up the world economy. In a world with fake news, flat earthers, and conspiracy theorists, what's a thinking person like you supposed to do? Think like a skeptic, of course. On the current episode of Star Talk All Stars, neuroscientist and host Heather Berlin, PhD, and her comic co host Ari Shafir investigate the importance of skepticism and the power of evidence based thinking. To help us separate fact from fiction, Heather and Ari are joined in studio by guests Cara Santa Maria and Dr. Stephen Novella, two of the hosts of the popular weekly science podcast, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. If you're worried about the growing tide of anti-intellectualism and the devaluation of experts and facts which we're seeing all around us, tune in for a show filled with science and skepticism. Remember, trust no one, question authority, and listen to Star Talk All Stars to get the rigorous scientific thinking that you're desperate to hear. That's Star Talk All Stars. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts and make sure to subscribe. Okay, so back to our evil algorithm day in the life. So let's say you've scrolled through Instagram, you've read your news app, the stock market seems to be okay. Now you're heading out for the day. You had breakfast at a coffee shop, you went to the bathroom, and you went to wash your hands. But your skin, it's darker than, say, a white Caucasian. You're a person of color. The soap dispensers just don't work. The white guy next to you, he comes in, he needs soap, no problem, soap comes out. You try again, no soap. The algorithm in the soap dispenser is taking input from an infrared camera. The infrared bounces off of darker skin and triggers soap differently than it does on white skin. So no soap for you. Could be an algorithm, could be mechanical, whatever it is, that is terrible. Thanks, algorithms. Then you go back out into the store and you open up Facebook and you wanna post about your day and about this finding of this stupid soap dispenser, but Studies are finding that doing so and posting too often can cause emotional health decline. Facebook's algorithm can tell what's in a photo, can share photos based on stuff that people would like to get them to keep using Facebook, and it does this whether you want it to or not. If you post something and the algorithm doesn't like it, people won't see it. Even if you think it's really important, that doesn't necessarily mean Facebook thinks it's important. Even if your friends might think it's important, if they don't act on it and train the algorithm to show them that kind of photo, they're not gonna see it. There's a study that found that people often feel ignored on Facebook. Users describing their existence felt, quote, less meaningful when others did not like or share their statuses and comments. That's a lot of power to give an algorithm over your life. And in fact, another study, Independence on Social Networks, found that Social media can be harmful to your emotional health in general. So now you're home, you're lonely, you're depressed, you didn't wash your hands so you feel kind of gross, and wow, have algorithms been there every step of the way making sure that your life is not going well. Yes, this episode is a little more dramatic than usual on Seeker Plus, in part because many of these algorithmic problems are a little more nebulous, or they affect very specific groups. It's hard to say that all algorithms are bad. In the same way, it's hard to say all algorithms are good, especially now that you know they've existed for thousands of years. But the way that we teach machine learning algorithms to do things 
is by showing them data. And as we say, they would use this as a base. All those yellow things, those are bananas. All those, those are monkeys. See the lips and the forehead, the, see the hair on the body. What's to stop the algorithm from labeling people as monkeys? What's to stop the algorithm from getting bad training? And it has. Google labeled two black friends gorillas. Flickr labeled a black man as an ape. Not cool algorithms, but also not cool humans who programmed them. Because again, people provided this base data. Are algorithms evil? No. But they can act evil. I'm going to reiterate that quote from earlier because I think that's really the crux of this. The world is biased. The historical data is biased. Hence, it is not surprising that we receive biased results. Hopefully, we're all using these technological embarrassments as an excuse to confront that these unconscious bias exists in ourselves, and thus we should fix our algorithms. Personally, I learned a lot about algorithms from this series. Look around you right now. Everything with a computer, everything that has a process, everything with an electronic bit in it, every cookbook that is in your kitchen has an algorithm in it. You are surrounded by them. And actually, even though we were just talking about how many of them can be used for evil, it's pretty amazing how many there are and what they can do, isn't it? It's one of the most powerful inventions, I would guess, that humans have ever created. And hopefully, we use our power with great responsibility. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please subscribe so you get more Seeker Plus most Thursdays. If you want to see more videos with me, please subscribe to my channel as well, Uno Dose of Trace. What do you think about all of this algorithmic future? You can tell us in the comments. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.